Liberation. Relevance of Sutta Vinaya by Venerable Dhamma Vidu Dero Namo Tassa Bhakavato Arahato Sama Sambhutasa Introduction Nowadays there is a proliferation of books on Buddhism. Studying these books would inevitably result in imbibing some of the views and interpretations <coughs> of the various writers on what the Buddha actually taught, which could result in some wrong views. On the other hand, there are some meditation teachers who advise their students not to study at all, but to only meditate. In effect, what they are suggesting is for their students to listen to them only. Avoiding the two extremes, we should practice the middle way taught by the Buddha. Investigate his discourses and practice as best we can the Noble Eightfold Path as he advised. The importance of the Buddha's discourses for the practice of the Dharma <clears throat> whether by lay people or by monks, can hardly be exaggerated. The Buddha warned of the future when people would refuse to listen to his discourses, suttas. <clears throat> Samyutta Nikaya Sutta 20.7 reads, In the future those suttas uttered by the Tathagata deep, profound in meaning, transcending the world, concerning emptiness. To these, when uttered, they will not listen, will not give a ready ear, will not want to understand, to recite, to master them. But those discourses made by poets, mere poetry, a conglomeration of words and phrases alien outside the Buddha's teachings, the utterances of disciples, to these when uttered they will listen, will give a ready ear, <coughs> will want to understand, to recite, to master them. Thus it is monks that the suttas uttered by the Tathagata deep, profound in meaning, transcending the world, concerning emptiness, will disappear. Therefore, monks, train yourselves thus. To these very suttas we will listen, give a ready ear, understand, recite and master them. Instead of the suttas themselves, many prefer to study other books or listen to others' teachings which may be inconsistent with the suttas. The resulting damage is twofold. The suttas will disappear and people will gain wrong understanding of the Dhamma. <coughs> Nikaya The suttas are contained in the Sutta Pitaka, Treasury of Discourses within which are five collections, Nikayas. Of these, the first four are Diga Nikaya, consists of three books of long discourses, 34 suttas. Majjhima Nikaya comprises three books containing middle-length discourses, 152 suttas. Samyutta Nikaya contains about 2,000 short discourses in five books, and Anguttara Nikaya contains about 2,000 short discourses in five books. <coughs> Gudaka Nikaya, the fifth, is the minor or small collection. Although termed small, it is in fact the largest as more and more books have been added to it over the years. It has grown to 15 books in the Thai and Sri Lankan versions. In 1956, the Sangha Council in Burma 
added another three books which are not the Buddha's own words. These three editions are Melinda Panna, Peta Ko Padesa, and Nati Pakarana. <coughs> this is how the Kudaka Nikaya grew from a minor collection to become a major collection. In the future, say in 500 or 1000 years time, this would definitely create even more confusion. Out of the 18 books now, probably only 6 are reliable in that they do not contradict the 4 Nikayas. These 6 reliable books are the Dhammapada, Sutta Nipata, Theragata, Therigata, Iti Wutaka and Udana. As Buddhists, we should be familiar with the suttas and, if possible, obtain our own copies. It is a sad fact that, whereas we rarely find Muslims without the Quran or Christians without the Bible, yet we find many Buddhists without the Nikayas. <coughs> Dhamma Vinaya is our teacher. Nowadays the Buddha's teachings are often referred to as Tipitaka or Tripitaka, three treasuries. Although they were called Dhamma Vinaya by the Buddha in the discourses. In an Guttara Nikaya Sutta 4.180, the Buddha specifically refers to Dhamma as the Sutta's discourses. Vinaya is the disciplinary, disciplinary code of monks and nuns. In the Nikayas, it is also implied that the suttas are Saddhamma, which means true Dharma. The true Dharma is embodied in the earliest discourses of the Buddha found in the Digga, Majjhima, Samyutta and Anguttara Nikayas. <coughs> and the six books of Kudaka Nikaya mentioned above. These Nikayas are generally accepted by all schools of Buddhism to be the original teachings of the Buddha, unlike other books which are controversial because they contain some contradictions with the Nikayas. The earliest discourses in the Nikayas are very consistent and contain the flavour of liberation from suffering. In the Mahaparinibbana Sutta, Diga Nikaya Sutta 16, which details the demise of the Buddha, the Buddha advised the monks, Whatever Dhamma Vinaya I have pointed out and formulated for you, that will be your teacher when I am gone. This is a very important statement, the significance of which has been overlooked by many Buddhists. <coughs> because many Buddhists have not heard this advice or grasped its significance, they search far and wide for a teacher, a teacher they can be proud of and brag about his attainments etc. Some even travel halfway around the world or more in search in su more in such a search. These people create personality cults based on the perceived goodness of the teacher rather than on the Dhamma Vinaya itself. In some cases after many years their master passes away, leaving them high and dry. <coughs> Despite the passage of time, the followers have not made much progress and have failed to taste the essence of the Dharma. They would feel empty as such. We must always remember that the Dhamma Vinaya is our foremost teacher. Again in Digha Nikaya Sutta 16, the Buddha said, Monks, be a lamp unto yourselves, be a refuge unto yourselves. 
with no other refuge. Take the Dhamma as your lamp. Take the Dhamma as your refuge with no other refuge. In other words, we should depend solely on ourselves and on the Buddha's words. <coughs> the Buddha's words take precedence. Let us consider what happened after the Buddha's passing away. About 100 years after the Buddha passed into Nibbana, conflict arose among the monks. The second Sangha council was consequently called to resolve the, those, these differences. Ten points were disputed, one of which concerned whether we should always follow the advice of a teacher. In this case, it was decided that if a monk's teachings or instructions were in accordance with the Buddha's teachings, i.e. the earliest suttas on Vinaya, then his words should be followed. However, if his instructions contradicted the Buddha's teachings, they should be ignored. Thus the Second Sangha Council's ruling on this matter was very clear and definite. The Buddha's words take precedence over any monk's words. Buddhists should therefore become familiar with the suttas so that they can judge whether the instructions of monks or some other teachers are in accordance with the Buddha's teachings. This is why Buddhists should always remember the Dhamma Vinaya is their foremost teacher. More specifically for lay people, the earliest discourses in the Nikayas. <coughs> Refuge only in the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha. In the suttas, the Buddha referred to a monk as a Kalyanamitta, good friend. A monk is a good friend who introduces you to the Buddha's teachings and encourages you in the spiritual path. It is you, however, who have to take the three refuges, i.e. dependence, in the Buddha, Dharma and Sangha. But nowadays, some people have added a fourth refuge, i.e. refuge in a monk or a teacher, which contradicts the Buddha's teachings. This is made very clear in the suttas. For instance, in Majjhiman Nikaya Sutta 84, there was an arahant who taught very impressively, and a king asked, to take a refuge in him. The other hand replied that refuge could not be taken in him but only in the Buddha, Dharma and Sangha. The king then asked where the Buddha was. The other hand explained that the Buddha had passed into Nibbana, but even so people should still take refuge in the Buddha, Dharma and Sangha. This shows we should always acknowledge the Buddha as our foremost teacher, now embodied in his teachings, Dhamma Vinaya. The Dhamma refers to his discourses, suttas. The Sangha is the community of monastics, ideally those who are noble, Arya. World-renowned teacher can have wrong views. It is very difficult to distinguish between an Arya and a non-Arya, and we cannot rely on hearsay alone. Recommendations that such and such is a very famous monk who has many high attainments, etc., are very unreliable. As the Buddha stated in the Anguttara Nikaya Sutta 5.88, it is possible that a world-renowned monk of very senior status, with a huge following of lay and monastic disciples, and who is highly learned in the scriptures, can have wrong views. The Buddha gave us this warning for the future, i.e. nowadays. As he saw and knew that even such monks could not be relied upon, 
Therefore, the suttas and vinaya for monastics should be relied on and made our foremost teacher. Other teachers can be spiritual friends only. In an Guttara Nikaya Sutta 4.180, the Buddha taught the great authorities. He advised that when any monk says that such and such are teachings of the Buddha, <coughs> we should, without scorning or welcoming his words, compare those words with the suttas and vinaya. If they are not in accordance with the suttas and vinaya, we should reject them. Again, this illustrates how a strong grasp of the sutta vinaya is a reliable guide to what the Buddha actually taught. This knowledge enables us to distinguish between a teacher who teaches the true Dhamma and another who has wrong views. <coughs> Significance of Saddhamma In Samyutta Nikaya 16.13, the Buddha warned that the true Dhamma would remain unadulterated for 500 years after his passing into Nibbana. <coughs> Thereafter, it will become very difficult to distinguish the true teachings from false. Why? Because although many of these later books contain a lot of Dhamma, some add Dhamma, i.e. what is contrary to the Dhamma, are added here and there. These alterations scattered throughout these texts are only notice noticeable if one is sharp and very well versed in the earliest suttas. Otherwise, one would find it very difficult to distinguish the later books from the earlier ones. An analogy to gold trading. In this same sutta, the Buddha likened this situation to gold trading. <clears throat> he said that at that time, people still wanted to buy gold because only pure gold was being sold in the market. But one day people would make counterfeit gold of such quality that it would be indistinguishable from real gold. Under these circumstances, people will become weary. They will be reluctant to buy gold because they are afraid what they buy may be counterfeit gold. In the same way, the Buddha said in the future that Dharma would be, become polluted. When that happens, it will be very difficult to distinguish the true Dharma from the false, and people will lose interest in the Dharma. Therefore, we must take the trouble to find out what is true Dharma and not become confused. Importance of Right View Why is it very important to ensure that we study only the true Dharma? We know that the only path out of samsara round the rebirths, as taught by the Buddha, is the Aryan Eightfold Path. Majjhima Nikaya Sutta 117 states that the Aryan Eightfold Path starts with right view. Without right view, one has not entered upon the path. According to this sutta, right view will lead to right thought, and that will lead to right speech. Right speech will lead to right action. Right action in turn will lead to right livelihood, which leads to right effort. Finally, right effort will be the basis for right recollection, which leads to right concentration. In this way, based on right view, the factors of the Aryan Eightfold Path are cultivated and developed one by one. Sangita Nikaya Sutta 45.1.8 also states that a person with right view understands the four Aryan truths. If a <coughs> person fully understands the Aryan truths, he will become an Anahan or a Pacheka Buddha. 
even a sama sambuddha, even a comparatively shallow understanding of the Aryan truths will enable one to become an Arya, a noble one. Right view is the condition for stream entry. Anguttara Nikaya Suttas 9.20 and 10.63 and Samyutta Nikaya Sutta 13.1 confirm that the Sotapanna is endowed with the right view. <coughs> Clearly the first thing one must acquire in the practice of the Aryan Eightfold Path is right view. Right view is extremely important. Benefits of listening to Dhamma the Buddha called his disciples savakas, listeners or hearers, stressing the importance of listening to the suttas. The suttas in Vinaya show clearly that all those who attained the first stage of Ariyahud did so by listening to the Buddha's discourses. Today we are very fortunate to have the Buddha's discourses, exactly as he spoke them contained in the Nikayas. Reading the suttas can be like sitting next to the Buddha and listening to him. It is wise not to waste this rare opportunity to investigate deeply into the earliest suttas. In Diganakaya Sutta 14, the Buddha stated that six Buddhas appeared over 91 world cycles. That is to say, on average, a Buddha appeared once in over ten world cycles. The Buddha gave a simile to illustrate the unimaginably long time span of a world cycle. <coughs> Sangyuta Nikaya 15.1.5 Rare, indeed, is a Samasam Buddha. We are blessed to live in the age of the Dhamma. This is as good as living during the Buddha's time. In fact, had we lived then, we might not have been able to familiarize ourselves with as many suttas as we can now. When the discourse is about 5,000, are available in book form. <coughs> Stream entry had train attained by listening to Dharma. In Anguttara Nikaya Sutta 5.202, the five advantages of hearing the Dharma are enumerated. One of them is the attainment of right view. Since attaining right view is synonymous with attaining Ariyahud, it is clear that hearing Dharma can make one an Aryan disciple. Madhyamanakaya Sutta 43 states that two conditions are needed for the arising of right view. The voice of another teaching the Dharma and thorough consideration, Yoniso Manasikara. This is very important. Right view only arises by hearing the Dharma from someone else, not by one's self through meditation. In Samyutta Nikaya Sutta 46.4.8, the Buddha gave another confirmation. He said that when one listens to the Dharma with thorough attention, the five hindrances, Nitvarana, do not exist and the seven factors of enlightenment, Bojanga, are complete. These are the conditions to become an Arya. Therefore, if we listen to the Dhamma with thorough attention, we can become Aryas. Anguttara Nikaya Sutta 10.75 tells about the person who is saved by Dhamma. For he has listened, sa Vanena, he has done much learning, Bahu Satcha, 
Here's Panorated View. He wins partial release. The ear for Dharma, Dharma Soto, saves this person. The word Sota Pati consists of Sota meaning stream or ear and Apati meaning entering into. Normally, Sota Pati is translated as stream entry, but it can also mean ear entry. In the sense of the ear being penetrated by the Dharma, a close study of the suttas suggests that the latter translation is also valid because the Buddha's disciples were called savakas or listeners of the Dhamma, and he generally referred the, to them as Aryan disciples in the suttas. Example on Guttaranikaya suttas 4.58 and 5.41. So in Yuta Nikaya Sutta 55.6.5 explains the four factors necessary to attain Sota Pati, Sota Pati Yan Gani. Associating with true persons, i.e. persons who understand the true Dharma, listening to the true Dharma, thorough consideration, and practicing Dharma in accordance with the Dharma, i.e. living your life according to the Dharma, for instance, keeping the precepts, etc. Furthermore, we find in the suttas and Vinaya that every person who attained stream entry, first path, did so by listening to the Dharma. Such people were said to have attained the vision of the Dharma, Dhamma Chaku, by which the suttas explain as realizing that all that is subject to arising birth is subject to cessation death. Such a person is also said to have understood the basic Dhamma, crossed beyond doubt and become independent of others in the Buddha's teaching. Sotapanna and Sakadagamin <clears throat> do not need perfect concentration. In Anguttara Nikaya Suttas 3.85 and 9.12, the Buddha said that Sota Panna and Sakadagaman, first and second fruit areas, have perfect morality. The third fruition, Anagaman, has perfect morality and perfect concentration. The fourth fruition, Arahant, has perfect morality, perfect concentration and perfect wisdom. These two suttas indicate that the attainment of the Anagaman on the Arahant stages must have perfect concentration which is always defined as the four jhanas in the suttas, example Sanyuta Nikaya suttas 45.1.8 and 45.3.8. However, one, however, one pointedness of mind is also defined as the four jhanas in Sanyuta Nikaya 48.10. This is again confirmed by Majjhima Nikaya Sutta 64, which says outright that it is impossible to become an Anagaman or Arahant without Jhana. It is interesting to note that the Sotapanna and the Sakadagaman do not typically have perfect concentration, i.e. Jhana is not a prerequisite. The difference between these two attainments is that the Sakadagaman has reduced more lust, hatred and delusion compared with the Sotapanna. The reduction of lust, hatred and delusion requires a certain amount, a certain amount of Samadhi concentration because these defilements are connected to the five hindrances attainment of perfect samadhi results in the abandonment of hindrances. 
Two of these hindrances are sensual desire, similar to lust and ill will, related to hatred. This further corroborates the point that stream entry can be attained by just listening to the Dhamma with thorough consideration, attention. And we do find in the suttas and Vinaya that many who came to listen to the Buddha for the first time attained stream entry. Also, Sangyuta Nikaya Sutta 55.1.2 states that the characteristics of the Sotapanna are unshakable confidence in the Buddha, the Dhamma and the Sangha, as well as perfect morality. There is no mention of meditation. Sotapanna stage were relatively not difficult to attain. Anguta Renakaya Sutta 3.9.85 states that, despite having perfect morality, Aryas can still have minor transgressions of the precepts. For instance, Sangita Nakaya Sutta 55.3.4 mentions the demise of a Sakyan named Sarakani, after which the Buddha proclaimed that Sarakani had attained the Sotapanna first fruition stage at his death. This annoyed a number of people as Sarakani was known to have failed in his training and had taken to drink. The people were angry because the Buddha called Sarakani a Sotapanna even though the latter had taken to drink. This seemed to indicate that the new Sharakani was quite a heavy drinker. People found it hard to believe that he was a Sotapanna. When the Buddha was informed that many people disbelieved Sarakani attained Sotapanna, the Buddha said, Why, Mahanama, if these great saltries here could know what is spoken well and what is spoken ill, I would proclaim even these great trees to be Sotapanas, bound for enlightenment. Much more than do I proclaim Sarakani the second to be one. This incident goes to show that the state of, a, of Sotapanna is attained by listening to the Buddha's words and need not be as difficult to attain as many people think. The problem might be that they do not make enough effort to study the discourses, which is our best guide or teacher, as advised by the Buddha, for right view. Madhyamanakaya Sutta 14 tells how a cousin of the Buddha, Mahanama, came to see the Buddha and said that he had learnt the Dhamma for a long time and knew that greed, hatred and delusion were defilements. Yet he said that sometimes he could not control his mind when it was invaded by these defilements. He asked the Buddha whether this was because there were some states that he had not abandoned internally. The Buddha replied that even if an Aryan disciple had seen with wisdom that great hatred and delusion were wrong, he might still be attracted by sensual pleasures unless he had attained piti, delight, and sukha, happiness. Piti and sukha are factors of the jhana state. Jhana may be translated as a state of mental brightness. When the mind becomes bright because of sati patana, intense recollection and concentration, unless we have attained one pointedness of mind and experienced the bliss which is higher than sensual pleasure, we cannot help but be attracted to sensual pleasures. The commentaries state that Mahanama was already a Sakadagaman at that time. 
Thus the Sutta shows that there can be Arihant who have not attained jhana and who can be influenced by greed, hatred and delusion. Again, this proves in this context that the Sotapanna stage need not be as high as some people think. There is evidence in the suttas and Vinaya that very ordinary people attained stream entry upon listening to the Dharma for the first time. <coughs> for example, in the Vinaya books Kula Vaga, chapter 7, we find that the 31 men dis dispatched to murder the Buddha all attained stream entry when the Buddha preached to them. On another occasion, 120,000 inhabitants of Radhigaha attained stream entry when they heard the Buddha's discourse, Mahavaga chapter 1, for the first time. No liberation without knowledge of Dhamma and Jhana. The Buddha struggled with the utmost effort to attain liberation for six years he tried, always practiced by various teachers without success. According to Majjhima Nikaya Sutta 36, he sought for an alternative way to liberation and recalled his attainment of jhana when he was young under the rose apple tree. Then following on that memory came the realization that is the path to enlightenment. He thought, Why am I afraid of that pleasure born of jhana that has nothing to do with sensual pleasures and unwholesome states? Therefore he attained the four jhanas with the concentrated mind which was purified, bright, unblemished, rid of imperfections. He directed it to the knowledge of his manifold past lives. Only when he attained the psychic powers and recalled his past lives with their aspects and particulars that the Dhamma he learnt from Kasapa Buddha were recalled. Subsequently, he directed his mind to knowledge of the passing away and reappearance of beings. Thereafter, he contemplated on the four Aryan truths and attained liberation. On the other hand, his disciples required only several days to attain liberation because of the Dhamma knowledge taught to them by the Buddha. Venerable Sariputta took 14 days, Mahakasapa 8 days, and Mahamogalana only 7 days. External sect ascetics without knowledge of the Dhamma, however, do not attain liberation, even though they attain jhana. But when some of them who had already attained jhana heard the Dhamma, they immediately attained liberation. However, when we hear the same Dhamma Sutta now, we fail to attain liberation, mainly due to not possessing jhana. This shows that both knowledge of the Dhamma and attainment of jhana are necessary for the full liberation of a hunt food. <coughs> Five occasions to attain liberation. Anguttara Renakaya Sutta 5.3.26 is very interesting. It describes the five occasions when a monk attains liberation. These are listening to the Dhamma. It brings joy, especially if one has an affinity for the Dhamma. This will naturally calm the mind and make it peaceful and tranquil. A tranquil mind easily becomes concentrated. With a concentrated mind, insight will arise. Teaching the Dhamma to teach the Dhamma, one needs to understand and reflect on the Dhamma. From here, joy also arises, which will lead successively to tranquility, concentration and insight. Repeating the Dhamma 
Although not common nowadays, it was quite common during the Buddha's time when books did not exist. At that time, the Dhamma was preserved and passed on to the next generation by people who memorized them through regular recitation. If monks are going to pass on the Dhamma, they have to be very familiar with the Dhamma. Thus, monks spent a lot of time reciting the Dhamma. In fact, in those days, it was the monk's duty to repeat and recite the Dhamma. This constant repetition will make you very familiar with it. The first time you read, listen to, or recite the Sutta, you will have a certain level of understanding. With greater repetition, your understanding becomes deeper and deeper. The similar sequence of joy, tranquility, uh, concentration and insight follows. Reflecting on the Dhamma This involves contemplating, thinking and pondering on the Dhamma in its various aspects, validity and relevance to your life. In this way, insight will arise through the same sequence of events. During meditation According to the suttas, this involves reflecting on the concentration sign, Samadhi Nimitta, which is rightly grasped and penetrated. The same sequence of joy, tranquility, concentration and insight follows. Although not stated here, it is very probable from scrutinizing the suttas and Vinaya that these are also the five occasions for partial liberation, i.e. the attainment of the various stages of Aryahid, <coughs> the paths Maga and Fruition's Pala. It is crucial to note that out of these five occasions, only one is during formal meditation and other four, and the other four are out of formal meditation listening, teaching, repeating and reflecting on the Saddhamma. One should by now see the importance of knowing the Saddhamma found in the earliest suttas. It is also obvious from this sutta that the that of the four objects of sati, recollection, that should be contemplated, namely body, feelings, mind and dhamma. Dhamma is the most important. Thus we see in the Vinaya books, Mahavaga chapter 1, that the first 1060 Arahant disciples of the Buddha all attained enlightenment from hearing the Buddha's discourse only. But of course these candidates must have been specially chosen by the Buddha because of their having attained jhana this lifetime or in their previous human lifetime. Since jhana is the necessary condition for arahanthood, as stated in suttas a.n 9.36, m.n 52 and 64 etc. In these five occasions, the depth of insight depends on our perfection of the Noble Eightfold Path. For instance, deep insights are possible with perfect, perfect concentration, jhana, supported by the other seven factors of the Noble Eightfold Path. In this case, high attainments like Anagaman or Arahant can be expected. Concentration short of jhana yields shallower insights. The result may be Sotapanna or Sakadagaman. This is clear from Anguttara Nikaya Suttas 3.85 and 9.12 mentioned earlier. <coughs> Chapter 1 of the Mahavaga, Vinaya Pitaka, also makes this very clear. After the Buddha converted a thousand Matadhir ascetics to become his disciples, the Buddha preached to them the Fire Discourse, Adita Sutta, 
whereupon all one thousand of them became arahants. Thereafter the Buddha brought them to Radhigaha, where King Bimbisara led twelve Nahutas of lay people to visit the Buddha. According to the Pali Dictionary, the Nahuta is a vast number, a myriad, and according to the commentary is ten thousand. The Buddha gave them a graduated discourse on the Dhamma, basically on the Four Noble Truths, and all twelve Nahutas, one hundred and twenty thousand of them attained the vision of the Dhamma. First Path Arya Attainment Some of them may have practiced meditation, but it is highly improbable that every one of this large number of people would have done so. Importance of Listening to Dhamma Earlier it was mentioned that one of the two conditions needed for the arising of right view is the voice of another teaching the Dhamma. This same Sutta, Majjhimanakaya Sutta 43, states that after right view is attained, five other important conditions are needed to support right view for the final liberation, Arahanthood, they are morality, sila, listening to the Dhamma, Dhamma Savana, Dis discussion of the Dhamma, Dhamma Sakacha, tranquilization of mind, samatha and contemplation, vipassana. Vipassana and samatha are synonymous with the seventh and eighth factors respectively of the Noble Eightfold Path. Samatha is the Buddha's way of meditation, which leads to samadhi, concentration, i.e. the four jhanas. This is obvious from Majjhima Nikaya Sutta 108, which states that the type of meditation praised by the Buddha is the four jhanas, and the Majjhima Nikaya Sutta 27, which refers to the jhanas as the footprints of the Tathagata. Besides meditation, one has to do the other four things. It is obvious that by meditation alone, one cannot become an arahant. On top of right view, meditation has to be supported by, by moral conduct, listening to the Dhamma, discussing the Dhamma, and contemplation of the Dhamma. Refer to Anguttara Nikaya Sutta 5.3.26 mentioned above. Indeed, a sound knowledge of the suttas and practice of all the other components of the Aryan Eightfold Path are of paramount importance. The above sutta, together with the earlier mentioned Anguttara Nikaya Sutta 5.3.26 and Sanyutta Nikaya Sutta 45.1.8, prove the necessity of listening to the Dhamma from the first step, i.e. to attain right view, until the very last step, i.e. to attain Arahanthood. In Sangita Nikaya Sutta 38.16, it is said that even after a person renounce and become monks, it is difficult to practice in accordance with the Dhamma. But Diga Nikaya Sutta 16 says that if monks were to live the holy life perfectly according to Dhamma Vinaya, the world would not lack for arahants. Now, to practice in accordance with the Dhamma perfectly, one has to be perfectly knowledgeable about the Buddha's instructions in the suttas. Conclusion Nowadays, some lay people practice meditation without studying the suttas and become presumptuous of their attainments. Their pride increases while their attachments do not decrease. 
If they are practicing according to the Dhamma, their defilements and unwholesome qualities, including pride, should certainly not increase. As stated in Anguttara Nikaya Sutta 8.2.19, in this Dhamma Vinaya, there is a gradual training, a gradual practice, a gradual progress, with no ab abruptness. Na ya takena, such as a penetration of knowledge, anapativeda, adherence to the Buddha's instructions in the suttas and vinaya is very important to ensure that we practice the correct and therefore shortest path once we see that there is a very clear and definite path out of the distressful round of rebirths as shown to us by the buddha we will turn away from the worldly path and follow the Aryan path according to the Buddha's discourses. <coughs> Anguttara Rinakaya Sutta 7.67 gives the parable of the carpenter's adds handle. In this parable the Buddha said that a carpenter while inspecting the handle of his adze, sees thereon the marks of his fingers and thumb. However, he knows not how much of the adze handle was worn away that day, the previous day or at any time. Yet he knows when the wearing away has reached its limit. Similarly, in the practice of the holy life, a monk does not know how much defilements have been worn away that day, the previous day or at any time, yet knows just when the wearing away reaches its limit. This parable implies that a monk cannot accurately say what spiritual level he is at. He can only be sure once he has attained Arahanthood. According to Sangita Nikaya Sutta 56.4.9, once a person has attained understanding of the four Aryan truths, i.e. attained right view, he would no more gaze at the face of a monk and think, surely this revered one, surely this Reverend is one who, knowing, knows, and see, seeing, sees. In other words, the perennial search in ignorance for a teacher figure has ended. He realizes that the teacher is here before him, the suttas and vinaya for monastics. But if he needed a good friend, Kalyanamitta to assist him, he would now know how to look for a suitable one. Brief suggestions on how to approach the Nikayas. It is recommended that one starts off by investigating the Anguttara Nikaya, followed by the Sangita Nikaya. These are the two most important Nikayas because they contain the most suttas and therefore the most information. Thereafter, study the Digha Nikaya and lastly the Majjama Nikaya, being probably the most difficult to understand. It is not essential to learn Pali and study the original Pali texts, although that is the best. Existing translations, although not perfect, are good enough for one to get a solid understanding. However, if one can check the Pali Dictionary for some of the translations which are doubtful, that will be good. In studying the Nikayas for the first time, one would find some suttas difficult to understand. 
However, one should plod on as one studies more suttas. One begins to understand those earlier problematic suttas. This is similar to assembling a jigsaw puzzle. In the beginning, one cannot see the overall picture. Only when more pieces are assembled can the picture begin to form. The Nikayas should be studied again and again to get good a good understanding. Although other books, example the commentaries and sub-commentaries, may be helpful, they are not recommended except for scholars because they consume too much time. Besides, they have been found to contain some opinions which are not consistent with the earliest suttas. However, having studied the Nikayas, it is better to utilize your time for meditation and put the Dhamma into practice, etc. However, some people may not be able to make a thorough study of the Nikayas, yet they can acquire the wholesome and potentially liberating habit of regularly reading from the Nikayas and reflecting on what they have read. Remember, not to study is one extreme and studying too much is another. Avoiding the extremes, we should, as the Buddha advised, investigate the Buddha's words found in the earliest suttas and put forth earnest effort according to those words in the practice of the Noble Eightfold Path.